So polyps, colorectal polyps are, are small growths that, that are in the bowel. It's, they're inside uh, the lumen of the bowel. And what they do is that some of the cells on the lining of the bowel uh, are, become rogue and then they clump together and they form little protrusions uh, and little lumps in the bowel. And these are polyps. Now polyps generally uh, are benign, um, and, but, and, but as they get bigger, and certainly if they get more than one centimeter and they change in shape and they change in character, they can become cancerous. So it's important to detect polyps during a camera examination of the bowel, during colonoscopy, for example. And then if we detect these polyps, we can remove these polyps when they're benign, before they become cancerous. Uh, and this is this has really been, has been shown that this can certainly save lives in terms of detecting these polyps early and preventing patients going on to have bowel cancer. Uh, the different the different types of polyps, you know, uh, is actually a very technical question. But I think, for, um, for, for in sort of gross terms, uh, what we what we notice is that polyps can either be very subtle, and they can hug the bowel and be flat, or they can form lumps and protrusions in the bowel. Uh, one of the difficulties is is that the flat ones that hug the bowel are often very difficult to detect. And therefore, it's important to have a good quality uh, colonoscopy by an accredited endoscopist who's used to looking for these flat areas, because otherwise they can be missed, and therefore they can eventually progress into becoming cancerous. So I think you know, in terms of causes of colorectal polyps, so the most the most common reason for for patients really having polyps is just by chance. You know, you, you develop these polyps uh, as you get older, uh, the cells start um, you're losing some of the cells, the turnover of the cells, you just need one particular mishap in the cells and the lining of the bowel, and then you develop uh, polyps. So it's of no sort of consequence, it happens by chance. And that's the majority of polyps that we see, certainly in the United Kingdom. There's another group uh, uh, of patients really that will have uh, a particular genetic predisposition. So they're more likely to develop polyps because of, of their genes and because of their family history. So what's important is to try and understand, you know, which members of your family and may have colorectal polyps who indeed may have had colorectal cancer, because that might put you at a higher risk of developing colorectal polyps. So, and therefore you may need a screening colonoscopy a little bit earlier than what we would recommend for their general population. And then, of course, there are, you know, lots of environmental factors. What I mean by that is that there may be aspects of your diet or there may be aspects of your lifestyle that's going to certainly exacerbate um, uh, the development uh, or the change in these polyps. So, for example, what we would normally recommend is that you have, you know, good amounts of fiber in your diet, you know, fruit and vegetables, and that's where your fiber day comes from, as the government has been saying in the United Kingdom, and drink plenty of fluids because what's important is to have good normal bowel transit. What I mean by that is that you should be going to the toilet to open your bowels on a regular basis with good well-formed stools without having the need to strain, without having the need to have a lot of diarrhea or having very small hard pellets. So your diet is important in that aspect. So having you know, a small amount of um, uh, red meat uh, and having you know, trying to avoid processed foods are all important aspects of that because those aspects can certainly uh, trigger um, the development of colorectal polyps. The other final aspect is really about your lifestyle. So it's important in this uh, in this era is to maintain a lifestyle where you're doing plenty of exercise and keeping fit and and, uh, and avoid obesity uh, because all of these aspects can also lead to prevention. Uh, of, of developing uh, colorectal polyps. So colorectal polyps are extremely common. And, you know, if, in fact, in the United Kingdom, we have a bowel cancer screening program uh, for originally it was for patients above the age of 60 and now uh, from the age of 55 to actually have a screening colonoscopy, even if you have no symptoms to detect these polyps. 
And, and, and often, actually, if you would do a colonoscopy, what would happen is that, you know, we would often detect polyps in about four out of 10 patients that would have these type of colonoscopies. So it's a very, very common condition and polyps are very common. Usually they're just, just benign and they can be snipped away before they cause uh, any harm. So treatment of cataractal polyps uh, on the whole, if they are small, they can just be removed during your index colonoscopy. So during your first procedure as you had your diagnostic colonoscopy, if we see small polyps, what we would do is that we would cut them away. Cut them away uh, using a hot wire or a cold wire to remove them in one piece. And then we send them off to the lab and, and then we'll evaluate that to make sure that they're benign. And then based on that, we would give you an idea of when your next surveillance, so when your next procedure should be. Uh, and we will then keep an eye on things to make sure you're not, you're not, you don't have a tendency to continuously develop um, colorectal polyps. Now, as the polyps get bigger, uh, you know, they, and they, even if they're benign, then it's important to use more specialized techniques using interventional endoscopy. So what I mean by that is using specialized tools using the same colonoscope, but to remove bigger polyps. You know, maybe polyps are more than three, four, five centimeters in size, and we need specialist tools and equipment and specialist training in order to remove that. So one of the, one of the techniques that we might use is a procedure called endoscopic mucosal resection. What that means is that we would uh, inject some fluid beneath, beneath the polyps because that would cushion it against the bowel wall and the muscle of the bowel wall. And then we would cut it away with a hot wire in one piece or in several pieces. And that, that is usually used for benign polyps that have a very low risk of cancer. As the polyps get bigger and the, and the size and the, and the shape of these polyps change, it's important then to use really specialized and highly specialized techniques. And one of those techniques is endoscopic submucosal dissection or ESD. And what that means is, is it's just removing these polyps using a two millimeter knife with a camera in the back passage after injecting fluid in that same layer below the polyp. So what we would do is cut these polyps away in one piece. And you may have a polyp that might be eight or 10 centimeters in size that would normally require major surgery to remove the section of the bowel that we can now remove endoscopically with ESD, you know, which, as a day case procedure. So it's really important that if you do have a big complex polyp, is to find somebody that does this procedure so that they can advise you whether you're suitable for this rather than just go down the route of having major surgery. And of course, there are some polyps that are cancerous. And if they're cancerous, we can use ESD if there's very early cancer. But if the cancer is a bit more advanced, then what we would need is surgery. And nowadays we would use keyhole surgery or robotic surgery to actually remove that section of the bowel and remove the lymph glands around it so that we can then offer um, a, a cure for patients, particularly if there's early cancer, or we could offer patients additional treatment, such as chemotherapy, if the cancerous cells have moved the lymph glands. So I think on the whole, quite an array of treatment for colorectal polyps. The simpler ones can be removed with endoscopic techniques, and the more complex ones and cancerous ones will require surgery with keyhole surgery to remove the section of the bowel.